today we're taking a look at something I've been uh, really excited about. This is an Anaxis solar microinverter. Fellow forum user by the name of Databasia. He sent these to me, two of these and a replacement Chinese inverter. And he sent these because, and he, he made videos of this. Uh, I'll link them down below or maybe in an annotation. Um, these inverters fail and they fail, uh, they make uh, some kind of uh, whizzing noise and they don't actually output any power even though uh, there's a fully illuminated solar panel attached. Something is wrong in here and the reason I'm excited about this is because solar microinverters and solar inverters in general, they are made to last and to last a really long time. They're usually made for a lifetime, of, a quote lifetime of 20 years, uh, sometimes 10 years. And this means that this is essentially military spec type of construction. So you can expect a very high quality PCBs, uh, very high quality, well-stabilized electrolytic capacitors and uh, magnetics. <laughs> this uh, enclosure, I guess, is a, a large piece, a two piece aluminum casting. And uh, you can really see it's a casting. Uh, it, it's got casting marks and a couple of finishing marks on it. But otherwise it's, it's a really, really solid, well finned, obviously this will get slightly warm. Uh, uh, they have very high efficiency, like this one I think is 94% efficiency and it only has 360 watts rated power. So that's not much, like at 95% efficiency, that's only 20 odd watts. Uh, it has to dissipate as heat. So uh, it doesn't need that much cooling, but obviously it's gonna be near a panel. So it's gonna be in a fairly hot spot. So. And uh, in this video, we'll only be taking a look at the innards of this Anexus unit. And in a separate video, I will try to do a repair on this. So if we take a look at the, um, at the label, uh, what I find really interesting, the only independent approval on here is TUV Rheinland. Uh, and TUV, it's, it's, it's perfectly serviceable, but you can really see like there is a sticker on here, some kind of tracking sticker, and it says country code uh, DE, i.e. Germany, Deutschland. And this this really has only been, like there, there is no reason for them to go to UL or to CSA because this will not be sold anywhere else but Germany and the Netherlands. So that's the only thing they, they certified this for, and that's perfectly fine. Are we in? Well, I guess not. It's got another plastic cover inside. Uh, I'm not, not quite sure why they bother with the extra plastic cover, but uh, yeah, I'll get this off. I just, I just love this kind of construction. It's, it's so beautifully laid out. Um, first of all, I can see that the PCB, this is, um, Clearly a, a very thick copper uh, PCB. I think it's just double thickness because it doesn't really stand out. But another reason the copper doesn't really stand out is because there is a lot of, um, uh, they put conformal coating on it. So it's uh, conformally coated, which means that there's a moisture barrier. Uh, it's uh, not easy for moisture to get in. It's so easy to see exactly what is going on here from the uh, panel. These these are the MC4 connectors that go to the panel. This is the DC input. We see there's an MOV, so that's just uh, over voltage or transient protection. When you plug it in, you can get arcing, uh, especially when you plug it out. Actually, you can get arcing here, uh, so this protects this. Uh, there's a Epcos, so a very high quality brand uh, film capacitor, common mode choke. There's this giant um, polyethylene uh, PK uh, capacitor here, which is just beautiful. I've never seen such a large uh, transparent top. I think they just did the transparent top to, to show how cool it is. You can actually see the film separations in the capacitors. I, mean, I will zoom in on that later. Um, another couple capacitors here. This might be, there might be some switching here because then it goes into this transformer. 
uh, they're up converting it to some higher bus voltage and storing it in these uh, large uh, capacitors. So this is the MPPT, the maximum power point tracker part. And this transformer, so in case you don't know how uh, solar inverters work, and when a solar panel is illuminated more or less, the optimal voltage at which you extract power from it changes. And it changes kind of non-linearly. So usually what you have to do, you have to, need, uh, you have to use a maximum power point tracker, which attempts to find the exact voltage and current setting that extracts the maximum amount of power from the solar, uh, solar cells. And they do that by just increasing or decreasing the amount of current that, that you pull from the solar cell and seeing if the product of voltage times current that results from that changes positively or negatively. This is called a negative slope uh, or hunting PowerPoint tracker. There are some variations on that to make it slightly more efficient, but in general, that's how it goes. And so what this, this whole thing does, they have relatively little, like compared to the amount of current that these panels output, relatively little capacitance here, and they upconvert it to this bus uh, current. And by modulating this transformer to draw more or less power, you can modify this power point that it's tracking at. So yeah, then it puts this in the bus, uh, high voltage bus, and then there's just a simple inverter. So probably an IGBT pair that sends it through a um, very high value transformer or a, no, this is a double choke. I think this is not even magnetically coupled. This is just a double choke. The idea is that you switch the MOSFETs on and off uh, fairly quickly and these inductors uh, smooth it out so you get a nice 50 hertz sine wave as the output. And I think underneath here are more switching transistors. So this and this and this and this, these are all thermal pads. Uh, I think the transistors are on the bottom side as well. So they conduct to the bottom side and then also to the top side. And you can actually see in the top molding, there are these extra higher bits that coincide with the uh, these thermal pads that also conduct heat up to this side. So thermal management is really good, especially for something that only dissipates like uh, less than 20 watts total. So yeah, well, aside from that, so you have here the inverter stage, there's some filtering and I think this, it looks like this is actually an output. I'm not quite sure. You would expect some kind of current sensing on the output. I am I am not sure. This is a capacitor, it says 630 volts. Uh, this might actually just be a current transformer. Uh, this definitely does some kind of, might just be a signal transformer because it's not in the current path. Let's uh, try to get it out some more and see if we can see the underside because this is going to be really interesting. There is so much going on on this PCB. I don't even know where to start. This is where the DC comes in and then goes, gets up converted, goes into the DC bus and then goes out as the AC somewhere here. And geez Louise, the, well, let's just see here. Uh, I saw like here is a small control PCB, which is almost definitely uh, controlling this transformer situation. So what we, we can definitely see here that this is some kind of power supply for this PCB. And then there's, these are obviously the transistors doing the uh, up conversion here with lots of bypassing uh, with ceramic caps. So what I assume is going on here is that via this circuit, which looks very similar to, to this here in the general layout, this transformer that was here actually is a power transformer that supplies power to this whole secondary circuit from the solar panel. And then there's some more local reg regulation here. Uh, this is also seems to be local reg regulation. I would assume this is 3.3 volts uh, power supply for the Bluetooth module because this is a Bluetooth connected uh, device. 
Yeah, well, this is obviously the inverter part, which seems to be using MOSFETs instead of IGBTs. And then here, I would assume, this is definitely not the converter. Uh, I would assume this is, this is maybe just DC switching. It's definitely a MOSFET. It's a 20 and 60. Yeah, that's a MOSFET. That's pretty much the, the basic layout. There's a big microcontroller here. I see the microchip logo on there. So it's some kind of microcontroller or DSP. I would assume a bunch of these are gate drivers. So just based on proximity, I think this is a gate driver. And this situation might also just be gate driving because these MOSFETs need to be driven pretty hard. You cannot do that just from a microcontroller input, like aside from the level shift issues. Yeah, let's just uh, take a bit of a closer look, get the camera in really close. So first of all, looking at this this PCB vertical on the top side, what I can see here, and this is really hard to get on video, um, the little eight eight pin SOT chip there is a microchip PIC 12F. So that's almost definitely doing uh, maximum PowerPoint tracking here. The other three chips are just like 74 series logic. So yeah, pretty much no surprises here on the uh, right on the input. Uh, this is an on semiconductor uh, UC3844, um, which is a uh, just a standard current mode um, switching converter for isolated applications. And then this here is a Micrel MIC4680, which is a 200 kilohertz buck converter. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely doing power supply for the vertical PCB. And near the Bluetooth module, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, uh, this chip here is also a Micrel uh, MIC 4860, 4680, excuse me. And yeah, uh, this is a, um, the main controller is a uh, microchip PIC24F, uh, PIC24FJ54 or something. I am, I'm not familiar with these uh, product ranges. So uh, I know PIC 24F is like uh, pretty high end stuff. And of course, uh, an authentic botch resistor. Although I have to say, this is one of the best possible implementations you can have. Uh, it's glued down, very uh, liberally glued down. And the solder connections are pretty good. I, I don't think this will uh, cause any trouble, even in the long term. I think this here is a programming connector, uh, like it terminates into a, a JST type uh, connector on the bottom. So I think that's used for programming. Uh, but uh, obviously, I don't really have programming stuff for microchips, so no chance of downloading firmware. And well, honestly, that's pretty much it for uh, for this unit. I mean, I'm. As I said, you know, when you get into these uh, inverters, these are high tech pieces of equipment with very high standards. Even a botch resistor is not an afterthought. Um, they put a lot of care into making this work well. So, and this is also one of these hard things if they fail, because if they fail, they're usually so well protected against all kinds of things. It's usually just protection kicking in or something. Uh, it's very rare to have just very blunt failures, like this fuse, for instance. Uh, I don't expect this fuse to be blown. Uh, I will check it, of course, when I try to repair it, but it's very likely that this unit just has some kind of obscure fault with it under specific circumstances or something. I highly recommend you watch the video that Natabation made on the actual fault. And hopefully, maybe you have some some ideas in the comments of how to fix this. Um, I think, I personally think just based on his, um, his observations that it has to have something to do with the maximum PowerPoint tracker. So the first thing I would try is to uh, maybe just uh, like reflow uh, that board that does uh, the MPPT stuff and maybe some power components here and see if that fixes anything. Also, I'll, I'll just desolder uh, the passive components here, uh, the capacitors here on the primary side and see if they're still in spec, uh, maybe something 
uh, something drifted or I mean there's this control loop is pretty tight probably so maybe something some capacitor value has drifted and that kind of upsets the control loop otherwise uh, there's not, not much I can think of uh, that can go wrong in these and I don't see any gross failures um, there are no clear delaminations or anything it's the board just looks perfect to me so see you in the next video about this Well, I was going to do a this video we're about going to my power bank, a, which I just built, very old which, uh, power supply. Can use to so first of all, supplies. there are screws. You can see how well they perform. Uh, uh, there are security torques, so torques will blow up. Uh, However, I hit the snag. The second thing that's uh, my very AC obvious power meter why broke, this is a, an older power means supply that is, I um, had to input power. Is 29 volt amps at 100 volts 